Th thank you very much. Uh, so I'm Emma Howard. Uh, I'm at uh, Trinity College in Dublin, and this is work uh, that I've done with my colleague Carol Newman, who's also uh, in Trinity College, and uh, John Rand, who's at the University of Copenhagen, and, and Finn Tarp, who's here in, in UNU Wider. Um, so uh, just to say at the start, this is a uh, preliminary work, so uh, any, any comments or suggestions are, are very welcome. Um, so just to, to motivate uh, the paper a little bit, uh, so there's, there's lots of, of, of evidence, there's lots of literature um, that, that says that clustering facilitates growth um, of uh, regions, of countries, and, and of individual firms. And there's a lot of uh, empirical investigations into, um, into the, the evidence, uh, into the, the agglomeration economies that are present in a particular uh, country. Um, however, where there's limited empirical evidence is linking clustering to firm performance, uh, and this is what we try to, uh, try to address, uh, particularly in a developing country context. Uh, so there's, there's a number of reasons why we might think that firms that locate in clusters would be more productive. So there's a number of mechanisms through which uh, these productivity gains can occur. Uh, so the first one is that uh, if, if firms are located in a cluster with competitors, uh, that this competition will, will uh, incentivize them to cut slack and, and reduce costs. So we've got a, a competition channel. Uh, secondly, if, uh, if firms are locating in, in close proximity to other firms, this, this increases the potential for productivity spillovers. And then finally, there's also a labor productivity channel whereby if, if firms are uh, locating uh, close to firms that, that hire similar types of workers, a pool of labor emerges and you've got better matching of, of workers to jobs. So uh, workers that are, that are better suited to their jobs are going to be more productive. Uh, so we've also got this, this labor productivity channel. Um, the, the issue with this type of analysis in, in trying to identify the impact of locating in a, in a particular cluster on a firm's productivity is that you've got this self-selection issue. So uh, it may be the case that more productive firms locate in productive clusters. Uh, so this is kind of the, the, the main issue that we address in, in, in this paper. So, so we look at a, a way around this to try and identify the, the actual impact on the firm of locating in the cluster. So um, our contribution then to the research, we use a, a rich and unique data set of manufacturing firms in, in Vietnam. So we've got a, a, a developing country context. Um, what we do is we extend this Ollie Pakes um, method uh, of estimating productivity. So uh, I'll talk a little bit about the, the Ollie Pakes method in a minute, uh, but basically what we do is we, we take their method and we extend it to also control for the productivity of the cluster to, to address this self-selection issue. Um, and this allows us to identify how locating in a cluster impacts on the, the firm productivity. Um, so as I said, this is early work, so any comments or suggestions are, are welcome. Uh, but we, in, in future work, we're also going to attempt to uncover the mechanisms behind these uh, productivity spillovers. Uh, so just to, to talk briefly about the data, as I said, it's a, it's a, it's a very rich and unique data set. Um, it's the, the Vietnamese Enterprise Survey. Uh, we've got a panel from 2002 to 2007. Uh, that's from the, the General Statistics Office in Vietnam. Um, it's an unbalanced panel, so we have uh, firms entering and, and firms exiting over this, uh, this time period. Uh, and it's, uh, the, the data contains all registered uh, firms with more than 30 employees plus a representative sample of those with fewer than, than 30 employees. Um, and, and in that data then we have information on the commune in which the firm is located. Uh, so there's, there's three main administrative areas in Vietnam, so province is the largest, district is smaller, and then commune is the, the smallest geographical area. Uh, so there's about 12,000 communes in, in Vietnam, just to give you an idea. And then we also have uh, standard financial uh, data on the firm, so uh, we know their employees, their, their assets, and, and so on. Okay, so to uh, talk um, a little bit about what we actually do then in the paper. Um, so as I said, we extend this Ollie Pakes methodology, their, their approach for, um, for estimating productivity. So we extend it to also control for the uh, productivity of the cluster in which the firm is located when we're estimating the firm productivity. 
Um, this is a, a slightly similar approach uh, that De, De Locker uses in his 2007. Uh, so he, he does something similar in that he extends this Ollie Pakes method uh, to include uh, a control for whether the firm is an exporter or not uh, when estimating their productivity. So we do something similar here, but we control for uh, how productive the cluster is in which the firm is located. Um, so basically, there's two main parts to the analysis that I'm going to, to present today. Uh, then the, the, the first part is to estimate the firm's productivity, controlling for the productivity of the cluster in which they're located. Um, and once we have that productivity measure, then we can try to, uh, to disentangle the, the impact that the cluster productivity has on the individual firm productivity. Okay, so... Um, just briefly, I'm not going to go through this in detail because of time constraints, but briefly to, to tell you what the, the Ollie Pegg's estimation um, methodology does is uh, if the, the traditional way of estimating a firm productivity was just to, um, to, est to assume a Cobb-Douglas production function and then uh, take logs and, and run an OLS to get your, your estimates. Okay? So um, there's a, a couple of, of issues with that and it, it's in that your estimate are, are biased. So there's two main biases that occur when you, when you estimate uh, productivity in that way. So the first one is the simultaneity bias. Basically, uh, when the firm is choosing their, their inputs, they know their productivity. Um, but the productivity is unobserved to the econometrician. So you, you have a, a bias that, that uh, occurs there. Secondly, uh, you have a, a survival bias. Um, so uh, some, some people will, will uh, correct for this by just using a balanced panel. Um, the Ali Pakes methodology uh, controls for this survival bias in, in the estimation. So the survival bias occurs because you've got a, a negative relationship between the capital of a firm and the probability that they'll exit the market. Okay, so if you think that a, a firm's exit um, exit decision is going to be that they will exit the market if they experience a productivity shock, shock excuse me, that's greater than a particular threshold, right? That threshold is going to depend on the capital of the firm. So if the firm has more capital, they've got a, a greater potential for future profitability, so they're going to be able to take a bigger uh, productivity shock than, than a firm with a lower level of capital. Okay, so that's the, the second type of bias uh, that, that's controlled for in this OP procedure. And so OP, OP controls for both, both of these biases in this three-step estimation procedure. So what we do is we extend this procedure slightly by also controlling for this self-selection problem. So for controlling, by controlling for the productivity of the cluster that the firm's located in when we're estimating their productivity. And so there's a, a few assumptions uh, in the, the OP procedure. So uh, productivity follows a, a first order Markov process. We assume a Cobb-Douglas production function um, and we have to assume that investment is monotonically increasing in productivity. Okay, uh, what, o what the OP procedure does then is proxies productivity by a function in investment and capital. So we extend this and we also include in this proxy cluster productivity. Okay, so then there's three stages to the, the estimation. We obtain a consistent a a coefficient for labor in the first stage. The second stage controls for this survival bias by predicting a probability of survival and then using those predicted probabilities in the third stage to get the, the uh, consistent estimation of the capital coefficient. Okay, so uh, in, in uh, our production function estimation then, in investment is simply given by the change in, in assets uh, from, from one year to, to the other. Uh, our output measure, we just use the total revenue of the firm, total number of employees as labor, capital is our total assets. Um, we also need to compute the average productivity of the cluster to use in our estimation of the productivity of the firm. Okay, the way we do this is we just use an index number approach to measure the total factor productivity of every firm in the cluster. We define a cluster at three different levels. We conduct the, the analysis at three different levels. So uh, we define the cluster as either being the commune, the district, or the province that the firm is located in. And to determine the average productivity of the cluster, for firm I, we take 
the TFP for all other firms in the cluster and take an average. So we exclude firm I when we're, when we're uh, calculating the average productivity of the cluster. So our, our cluster measure then is, is firm specific and cluster specific, okay? So first of all, just to show you, um, so uh, the, the difference then in the production function estimates when we use a, a standard OLS approach and, and when we use our extended uh, OP approach for, for estimating the Cobb-Douglas production function. So uh, as it's a Cobb-Douglas production function, our, 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 um, our uh, variables here are logged. Uh, so if we have a look first of all at the capital coefficients, um, the uh, survival bias, so this negative relationship between the, the capital and the probability of exit, causes the uh, OLS uh, estimates to, be, to have a downward bias. So, uh, so as you can see, this is corrected for then when we use our extended OP approach. So the first column just shows you the, uh, the OLS estimates. The second column is the extended OP when the cluster is defined at the commune. Third is when it's defined at the district, and, and the last column is when we define the cluster at the, the province level. Okay. Um, the, the second thing to look at is this uh, labor coefficients, uh, so the difference in the labor coefficients. Um, we see an upward bias on the labor coefficient when we use OLS, and that's as a result of this simultaneity bias. Um, and this is corrected for then in, in our extended uh, OP procedure in, in columns two, three, and four. Okay, so we take these... Um, consistent estimates then for the, the coefficients on, on labor and productivity, and we basically just back out our, our, uh, our, our productivity of the, the individual firm. So we have this, this estimate for firm productivity, which controls not only for the simultaneity and the survival bias, but also for this self-selection bias. So it controls for the productivity of the cluster that the firm is located in. So once we have that, then we want to back out the, the impact to the firm of locating in a particular cluster. Uh, so we, we estimate this regression here, which is just the, the productivity of the firm regressed on past productivity, past investment, and past average uh, productivity of the cluster. Okay, so if we have a look at some results, uh, again, we conduct the results at three levels of analysis. So uh, the first two columns are when the cluster is defined at the commune level, next two are at the district, and, and the last two columns are when it's defined at the province level. So first thing to note is, is as you would expect, Previous productivity is, is positive and significant in all specifications of the model. So uh, the more productive the, the firm was last period, the more productive they'll, they'll be this, this period, as, as we would expect. Uh, second result to note then is that the, the investment, again, as expected, is positive and significant across all specifications. So investment has a, a positive effect on, on productivity. What we're really interested in here is the, the impact of the average cluster productivity on the productivity of the firm. And as you can see, uh, we have a positive and significant effect in the first specification of, of all three, uh, three of these models. So uh, the, the more productive the more productive the cluster is, the, the more productive the firm will be. To further try and, and disentangle this a little bit, the second uh, specification of the model includes an interaction term between uh, investment and cluster productivity. And when we include this interaction term, what we actually find is that the, the cluster productivity is no longer significant, but we have a, a positive and significant effect on this interaction term. So it seems that the, the, there's evidence of spillovers, but that for the firm to actually realize the benefit of these spillovers, it needs to also be investing. And this is something that, that comes out in the, the learning by exporting literature as well. So it's, a, it's not an unexpected result. Okay, so uh, to, to conclude, um, 
there, we, we have preliminary evidence of productivity spillovers uh, and that investment is necessary to, to benefit from these spillovers. Uh, so as I said, this is, is, is quite new work. Um, so we have a, a number of, of uh, issues that we want to address, some, some uh, next steps. Um, at the moment, we're, we're estimating productivity for, for our entire data set. Um, we're, we're going to, to separate out and, and estimate the productivity for each sector separately. Um, we also want to do a number of robustness checks, so um, we're going to conduct the analysis using other ca cluster characteristics. Um, so also average cluster labor, labor productivity um, and, the, and the size of the cluster. And then finally, we're going to explore a little bit the, the, the mechanisms behind these productivity spillovers. So um, technology transfers we know from previous work are, are very important in Vietnam, so we're going to, to look at that channel. Um, the presence of foreign firms also from previous work we, we know is important uh, and, and to investigate the competition channel as well, the, the competitors. Um, so. I'm out of time, thank you. Thank you.